Hi, everybody. It's Mark Rushton of markrushtongallery.com. It is. Yeah, there it is. There. Oh, look how big my finger is. <laughs> you have to get the camera way down on the. There, there you go. Markrushtongallery.com. My website where my gallery is. But my gallery might be here also eventually. We'll see. And I'm going to talk about that tonight. So I'm talking about getting an art space. And this has been in the plans for a few years one way or the other. And uh, I, lately I've been a little creatively spent, a little tired, been doing a lot of things uh, with regard to my father, my late father's estate. And um, that's, you know, that can tire you out a little bit. And I have the day job and, you know, I have other obligations. But um, anyway, so I wanted to talk about uh, mainframe studios here in Des Moines, Iowa. It's the largest nonprofit art, creative art space in the entire country. And, uh, it's in this old, uh, telephone company building that was, I think it was built in the late seventies. It's got that brutalist style. And, um, it didn't have, I, I believe this building had almost no windows. And yeah, they call it mainframe studios because I think that's where the mainframe computers used to be. And um, anyway, the building has been like completely rehabbed and windows cut into it. And they've worked for the last six or seven years at least. No, it originally opened in 2017. So they were probably working on it for a couple of years before that. And uh, just different, not just for painters and photographers, but ceramicists, clay art. Uh, there's nonprofits in there, recording studio, low power FM station, uh, event center type of thing where you can have little events and photographers. And uh, what, what else? Wait, you know, you can go through the mainframe studios website and see for yourself. It's a, quite a mix of uh um there's a guy that restores 19th century machines back to working order it's got a studio in there and uh and then they painted it this color here and in, in, like in the last year or so this mural here which it's a little unusual but uh considering what the building used to look like before and after cutting out the holes for the windows um, yeah, it works. Parking isn't the best. There's a little bit of uh, underground parking over here. And then, you know, no parking on the street anywhere. And then all the lots nearby say, no mainframe parking. How dare you? And then there's a hospital nearby. But, um, but they make it work. I mean, one of the most recent uh, first Fridays, October, it was in October. I think they had 1,700 people through, which is great. So there's like a, a 180 studios and 220 different artists or artists and artist people working out of this facility. And uh, I first toured it back in 2019. And, you know, was impressed by it. I think uh, just a couple of floors were open and now every floor is open. There's, you know, the main, there's four floors, I think, and all the studios and um, uh, the wait list had been long and now it's because they opened up, um, what was it? The second floor, I think in the recent, recent years that, um, the uh, the the wait list isn't as long, and there are there does seem to be some open spaces in there. So anyway, I threw my hat in the ring this past weekend, um, applied online, and uh, I, you know, uh, I I can afford any space in there. It's it's pretty reasonable, even with utilities. It's, it's pretty reasonable. And I could I could afford most spaces. Now there's this certain type I'm looking for, 
Yeah, but I have a pretty, and I know what I don't want, you know. There's, some of these have shared ceilings, and I don't want that. And I don't want something that's like 2,000 square feet, because I, I don't, I could afford that, I guess, but I, what am I going to do with that? That's, that's stupid. But there's some smaller places. There's some medium places with windows. Eh, it'll be kind of fun. Uh, really, what I kind of want to have with the studio space is not necessarily a working studio because my working studio is here out of my home in the basement and I've kind of gotten used to that. And after working the day job, it's nice to come home and do this, but this is only three blocks away from where I work three or four blocks away from, from the day job. It takes me like eight, nine minutes to walk here because it's uphill. You have to go up this, climb this huge hill, but really, I it maybe three or four blocks. It's probably three blocks from the parking ramp, my parking ramp. So it's kind of like you know, if you're already downtown and you want to be there for an event in the evening, that's great because you know, put in your time at work and that. I live way, way, way out in the Burbies, but um. So there's that, and uh, let's let's go through some of the some of the photos here. You know, so like I, I've been going through each floor and kind of looking at the uh, the emptier space. This was very nice. I don't know how big this was. Maybe, I mean, it looked like 500 square feet or so, something like that. Had a couple of uh, south facing windows. Get a great view of the uh, that interesting radio tower. That's behind the Ma Bell, Ma Bell building. Um, some of the artists that are that are in there is taking photos of, you know, the little QR codes and everything. They did interesting work. Here's another sort of trapezoidal studio. And again, what I'm looking for is not a studio space to, nece to necessarily work in, maybe on the weekends or something like that. Go down there for a few hours. I really want it to be a dis uh, um, display studio. I want it to be a display studio because I have art hanging up here in the house, but it, who sees it? I do. That's it. So it'd be nice to have something on the walls. And if you have high walls, then I can put, I have these large polyptics. I could get them out there. And of course, if you've got, 1700 people coming in in october uh and then all the other audience you know if you're there if you get regular hours on the weekend or something like that or they do uh small business saturday they have an event people come in you know and i i don't just have art i also have the i would have the you know the tote bags the all the other different sort of uh gifty stuff Helps pay the rent, you know. Um, yeah, I went around today and there were some. This I was on the second floor today, and one of these was pretty small, but it was like right off the elevator, you know, right off the elevator. Let's see what else I got on here. I'm going to do this off the screen because I've got. Eh, give me a second. What else have I got here? Uh, yeah. So this is like a little off the main office there. They've got this little area here. Kind of nice. Kind of nice. And then I, 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 you know, friends with one of the uh, clay artists down there. And she's got this up in her studio. That, that's good advice, don't you think? I think so. She's got an interesting studio. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, like being able to take something like this. Now, one thing that I would be interested in doing also down there is having some of my prints available, maybe in different sizes, and then having a signature piece down there. So imagine this, you know, four foot by five foot. I don't, I don't know if anybody would want that, but... Uh, 
you know, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be up for it. You know, it's like the, uh, the little Tesla Roadster. What could I put that on? You know, you know, a greeting card, a greeting card for your geeky husband, right? Or uh, a tote bag, a photo I took of a Tesla, Tesla Roadster, and then sort of rendered in software, and well, kind of interesting, I guess. I don't know. And the other thing that I like to do that I would have around would be the local iconography. So stuff about Des Moines. And this is one of the angels that's in Woodland Cemetery, the oldest cemetery in Des Moines. So I took this photo, printed it off on thermal, uh, thermal, a uh, thermal ribbon printer, and then, uh, you know, kind of rendered it in software and then inked it up. Kind of neat. I don't know, maybe. And then, you know, working on the, working on the details. Kind of love the details there. Um, let's see if I got any more uh, examples. I've got. Uh, oh yeah, here, here we go. Like that, the 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 Chrysler C three hundred, you know. 300 C was it? No, it's not the 300 C. It's the Chrysler 300. I think this was like the L by then, you know, it's got the big fast engine in it from the sixties. Um, maybe, maybe the, maybe that, uh, that sort of art will, uh, identify, you know, people identify with it. You know, the, the, the galaxy 500 from the early sixties, those are kind of cool. Um, yeah, just then be able to have a signature piece down there that is, you know, kind of of that scale, five foot by four foot. You just got one of them on the wall. It's a, you know, of a, of a soybean field in Madison County and, uh, you know, get one of those made and have it around. So anyway. That's kind of what I want to do. And then additionally, beyond that, um, I also want to bring in, you know, some other artist friends that, uh, you know, could, could show, you know, maybe they don't have enough stuff for a studio or they don't, whatever. Come on down, let's hang out on a first Friday or something. And then I've got other people that, you know, deal in rare books and other things and, It'd be, you know, kind of nice to have a place to just hang out. And, uh, oh, oh, you know what else? Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing I'm going to bring down. So if I, um, if I get a space down there, I'll probably bring down one of my dad's old radios. And it probably won't bring down the Atwater Kent because... This thing sounds fantastic. This is like what they call it. Um, it's not a tabletop, but it's um, it's you know you could put like something on the top of of the Atwater Kent. So it's like something that would go up against a sofa, the back of a sofa. That's about how tall it is. And it's got these little doors. It's just AM radio, and I've got to get some. Uh, God, I, get, I forgot to get contact cleaner. But then there, I've got this this other radio in my dad's in my mom's basement there's my dad's but i used it a lot as a kid is this zenith long distance radio and this thing's i forget how tall it is it's probably about four feet tall huge wood cabinet and so this has like a little uh butterfly lever lever on it it's made out of metal and so these things so you've got the am band here and you move that butterfly lever a little bit and this part falls aside, then it becomes like a short wave band. And then you move it a little bit more, and there's another short wave band beyond that. Now, this radio, which I used all the time as a, as a kid, uh, it does turn on, it does work, but it has a horrible, horrible hum. But I would love to get that fixed and, you know, like have like that sort of thing in the, in the space, you know? 
that kind of weird, uh, just oddball thing. The other thing I want to be able to do, yeah, you know, it's like my, um, like these sorts of things, which is, you know, kind of a Andy Warhol inspired. I put that on a, I put that on a tote bag. That's kind of cool. My wife liked that. What was the other thing? One more thing here. I'll show one more thing. Come on, where is it? Where is it? It's here somewhere. Be paid. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Which is the, it's like one of the more recognizable bits of Des Moines, I downtown Des Moines iconography, which is the Ruan Center at, uh, where is that? 666 Grand Avenue, I think it is. Maybe it's Locust. I don't know. This is the Liberty Building, and then this is the uh, Catholic Archdiocese Building. And then th this is the, uh, the pool that's downtown. Waiting on the corner of 6th and Grand for the bus. You're, you're headed north. That This would be your view. Except the, the Ruan Center has got that dark brown rusty building. And I just decided to make it a little bit more fashionable i made it my flame orange and then these just kind of on the green side because i i wanted a contrast to the the sky so again again imagine this being you know five feet tall four feet wide nobody's doing anything like that and uh you know i don't know if you're in des moines kind of kind of nice to have the skyline on your wall maybe i don't know that was why not, right? And then, of course, all all the other art that's in the Mark Rushton Gallery. You know, the, the book paintings, the um, the sketches, the uh, polyptics, the synthetic paper paintings, all that sort of stuff. So, um, anyway, uh, hopefully, in the next few months here, I'll get off the wait list and I'll get a studio space in the gallery. And then I'll have monthly shows. I'll be bringing stuff down. Um, try to evolve the theme every single month. And, uh, you know, go down there and do live streams with me in front of the paintings, talking about the paintings. Uh, you know, maybe going around to some other different uh, studios, interviewing the artists. You know, I kind of like that. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to get on, talk about it a little bit. Um, I didn't really feel like making any art tonight. I know some nights I get on here and I say, oh, I'm so glad I got on here and I did this and made this. But I've been, I've been a little fried and a little burned out lately just with everything. And I just need a little time. But it's nice to get on here and just kind of ramble, even if there's not that many people watching. But that's okay. It's it's a good way to develop your uh, speaking skills, I guess. I don't know. All right, that's it for this evening. Mark Rushton, markrushtongallery.com. Think about signing up. I have an email list that goes out once a week or so. And uh, first and foremost, it's a gallery. Yeah, there are paintings and other things out there for sale. You just take a look at the images, right? See, you know, it's like, ah, oh, it's kind of interesting. I'll talk to you later.